Greetings. We, are the Guardian. Welcome to Night Vision. The most common question I hear is, what is God's will for my life? In other words, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? What does God require of me? The answer, is surprisingly simple. The Bible contains all the answers. Firstly, He wants you to have faith. He wants you to believe. Hebrews 11 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For we must first believe that He exists, and, that He is a rewarder of those, who diligently seek Him. Unquote. So God's primary will for your life, is to believe. The Apostle Paul said in Thessalonians 5.15, Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for your life. Unquote. So God wants you to rejoice, pray, and be thankful. The Apostle Peter said that God has given us everything we need, to live a godly life, through our knowledge of Him, who called us by His own glory and goodness. Unquote. So we know that God has given us everything we need, to live a godly life. Micah 6.8 declares, What does the Lord require of you? To act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Unquote. That seems simple enough, embrace justice, mercy, and humility. But when most people ask about the will of God, they are wanting specifics. Should I take a certain job? Should I buy a certain house? Should I marry a certain person? That's where things get a bit trickier, but still not hard. If you apply a specific principle, you can release yourself from the burden of the decision. So listen closely. Sometimes when you ask for guidance, God will answer you directly, through the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, it's through His Word, the Bible. That's one of the many reasons to actually read the Bible. One, of the many reasons. But here's where it gets interesting. If you have to make a decision, a choice, and both choices are good, just pick one, and God will bless it. As long as you are walking close with God, He will bless whatever you decide. Even if you choose wrongly. Don't put God in a box. No matter what you screw up, God can fix any mistake. Psalm 1 says, If you dwell in the word of God, God will bless whatever you set your hands to. But always make the best decision you can. Sometimes, it's just common sense. If you are dating two different people, and you would like to marry one of them, pick the one that is closest to God. Don't go by their looks or outward appearance. Looks fade, but the value of a godly and trustworthy spouse, is beyond measure. You might be looking at two different jobs. Which one has a more godly environment? Don't go by which one pays the most. If one is a ministry, and the other is working in a bar, you don't need to be a rocket scientist, or a prophet, to make that choice. And what about those two houses? One is nicer, but one is more affordable. A good rule of thumb is, live within your means. Many times the bigger more impressive house, ends up being a burden. It causes you to have to work longer and harder, which can strain your marriage. You never want to win the battle, but lose the war. You never want to achieve the ultimate house, and lose your marriage. So there you have it. Everything you need to know, to know the will of God. Number 1, study the Bible. Number 2, pray and ask God for guidance, but be sure to listen for the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. And lastly, number 3, use common sense. And the icing on the cake, make the decision, and don't sweat it. God can fix any mistake you might make. That doesn't mean you should do whatever pops into your head. But as long as your choice is good, and pure, and wholesome, you can't go wrong. So get off the fence, and make the decision. And stand back, and watch God do his thing. Peace be unto you and your house. Are you facing a big decision? Do your best, and give God the rest. You cannot sit around on your hands, waiting for a miracle. 
God may have a miracle waiting for you, but you still have to reach out and take hold of it. It's called faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For we must first believe that He exists, and, that He is a rewarder of those, who diligently seek Him. With the emphasis, on diligent. In Jeremiah 29:11, God says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me, when you search for me with all your heart." Unquote. But his blessings are not generic, as they are reserved for his true children, those that love the Lord their God, with their whole heart, mind, and strength. Do you want to know the will of God? Do you want to live in the will of God? Then love him, with your whole heart, mind, and strength. Then and only then will you be able to stand upon and claim, the many precious promises of God. Then and only then, will you know the perfect will of God.